uh, my name is Ryan Benoit. I'm the co-founder and CTO of a uh, company called Ambient. Uh, so we're focused on uh, autonomous operation of oil wells. So I'm joined here by a couple individuals as well, and I'm going to ask them to stand up just because I can. Uh, ha and Burke, uh, I'm presenting some of their uh, work today, so um, uh, they're key individuals on our team. So what I'd like to discuss today is uh, our company's journey to autonomous operation of oil wells. And one of the key insights, and I have actually heard it discussed a few times today already, uh, sorry, just go back one, yeah, is uh, harnessing the human in the loop um, has been one of the biggest um, uh, sort of advances we've made in delivering data products within our company. So, like I said, we're, we're focusing on the self-driving car for oil wells. Um, our, our platform brings together IoT, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, a lot of the diff and even deep learning to help achieve that fact. Um, so what we're focused on there is we're looking to optimize the amount of production uh, EMPs are getting from their wells. We want to reduce the amount of labor and overhead uh, involved in operating those wells, uh, failures and maintenance, and overall reduce the LOE or the lift operating expense for those wells. So what our solution is based around is um, we provide end-to-end -end connectivity uh, platform for our system. And it is a full loop uh, system that allows us to apply feedback and new capabilities to the edge continuously. Um, therefore, building effectively an adaptive learning or intelligence system. So our, platform, our system and our hardware goes on a number of different use cases. Um, all of which it, our focus is to uh, cover every single well um, in the oil field. So uh, one of the big keys that we've learned over the, uh, over the last few years um, that we take forward and allow us to um, continue to have success and advance is the difference between just data and deep data. So when you talk about data, things get noisy very, very quickly. When you talk about deep data, you've focused your energies and your data collection around the most important types of pieces of data that will affect systems. And because of that, you, you've uh, reduced significantly um, the noise required when you start to develop machine learning patterns, when you start to develop deep learning models, you're working with a good data set. And some people may be from oil and gas, uh, SCADA it, it applies outside of oil and gas obviously, but it's well known that the quality of that data um, is lacking significantly. Um, its ability to actually capture what's happening in these situations is very problematic. And so we decided as a company that instead of trying to start there and start to fire up the human in the loop and start evaluating those things, that we would build our own hardware system that collected the data at very high resolution as we required it at the edge. And that's an absolute key for everything we've been building since. Because we're now able to filter so much noise out that our focus can be on truly uh, building effective models, uh, integrating through user experience in a number of different ways, the human into that loop, and continuously deploying that sort of system. So I just want to describe a little bit of how we focus on product delivery at Ambient. So our biggest key is that we are cross-functional and all our teams are cross-functional. We don't, we don't want to separate. Um, we want to include everyone in solving problems. So when we're talking about that uh, underneath my team. We have data scientists here today, computational mathematicians. We have software engineers, hardware engineers, and quality assurance uh, people all within that organization. Um, in terms of our data science, uh, there's two areas we like to focus on and that I guess I talk about. And one is data science informed algorithm development. And so what I talk about there is we use data science more as an analytic tool to allow us to effectively d uh, create and deliver algorithms. And because of that, we can cr uh, create algorithms that are high performance, that can be executed at the edge with reduced computing capabilities, and we can sort of iterate on and improve as we go. The other piece we, we deal with is true machine learning and deep learning models that we generate. 
and that we are continuously improving on and that are involved in our cloud platform and hopefully soon will be pushed out directly to the edge. Um, so one of the biggest things, and this is actually a recent learning for me and one that I sort of wanted to share with everyone uh, because I think it's very, very important. I, I have a deep background in software engineering, software uh, development. I've been involved in uh, data science, big data, those kind of spaces recently in the last six, seven years. But one of the things that I always felt weird about was that data science was treated differently than software development. It was treated differently than a lot of aspect, other aspects of your system. And that is, they weren't focused on continuous delivery. And so as an organization at Ambient, that is our push, and that has been a big di differentiator in terms of taking our company from here to here, is that we're continuously trying to deliver new functionality and improve on that and iterate on that and make sure we get feedback on it as quickly as possible. So. All right, so I just want to set up a couple sort of, uh, uh, I guess, definitions. So one of them is the discovery of data inside. As I talked about, this is what we use to, to allow us to ask questions. We have a very large data set. We probably have, I believe, um, the largest data set um, any, of any company in the oil and gas space, specifically around rod pump wells. And that's because it's been collected over the past uh, 10 to 12 years at very high resolution and a very effective data set, a deep data set, very focused on the physics of that uh, uh, operation. And so we've been able to gain significant data insight off of that data set. And so this allows us not just to ask it questions, but what we've been able to do actually is start to think about, well, what questions should we, st should we even be asking? And having a data set like that significantly improves that capability. So, when I think about data products, these are things that are constantly taking inputs and, and giving out outputs. Computer vision is a fantastic example of, of, of a data product. Uh, Self-driving cars, um, but there are many, many other ones um, um, that are out there. And I would contend every single one of these data products that has been created um, has been created with a, some sort of human intervention or human in the loop. It's the only way for these data products to, to advance past, you know, there's research that says 80%, uh, you know, it, some may say 85%, but being able to handle 100% uh, of the capabilities and it give users, the important part of this is give users the experience that they think it's magic, right? They want to know, in my example of this is, it, it, I, I'm not from Expensify, but I take a picture of a receipt, right? I scan that receipt and immediately it tells me I bought I went out for drinks with my colleagues and I paid $55. Well, guess what? Not all of that is happening by magic. A lot of that information is farmed out to people. They've integrated in the, the human in the loop seamlessly to be able to achieve that. And so, excuse me, I, I think that's absolutely um, important when creating data products. So um, this is a, a pretty noisy graphic of uh, all the different ways that a human can get involved in uh, a data product creation. So like I said, uh, I, I gave the example of Expensify, how um, you know, they're using humans to help with the outliers. Um, so you have supervised uh, models um, or weak supervision in some cases that they're using to find that um, outliers. As well, um, obviously in data science, we talk about using it to help us uh, train our data sets and, and actually generate the models to begin with, um, which is very effective. But I think you need to build an ecosystem that also helps collect that information as well. And so uh, what I'm going to take you through is a couple examples of how we've done that at Ambient um, to deliver um, capabilities and some of the results of those capabilities. So uh, first off, i just give you guys a little bit of a um, high-level overview of what we believe, how we kind of break down uh, EMP companies and a lot of the um, you know, optimization work that they do, the different um, uh, value-added uh, pieces that everybody works on. So this matrix here, obviously there's value that has um, daily troubleshooting, things like that has low value to the well economics um, and are not happening that often. There's uh, others that um, have high repetition um, but low value. So. Um, what we've focused on is what we consider at the very top there, which is the optimization of set points. 
So when you're talking about oil and gas uh, systems, uh, set point management is more than a full-time job. It's something uh, production engineers are hired for, um, but typically don't have time to do. Um, and in some cases, production techs are hired for and still don't have time to do. And so what we've decided to build um, as one of our uh, initial, one of our data products is something that effectively um, manage that system entirely uh, for EMP companies. And one of the key aspects of this is when I talk about deep data, is what we get out of this is we get the capability to have a baseline data that is repeatable and reproducible. So you know exactly how your oil field is being operated. So it's no longer up to a human to make a decision on a one-off basis. We're applying a methodology that across the entire oil field. So how we sort of like to visualize this, um, or I guess I like to visualize it, is uh, we're looking at a well and we're trying to figure out if that well is walking, if it's running, or, or if it's actually sprinting. And the, those different uh, aspects of that well doing those different situations can uh, dramatically affect its performance, its efficiency, its run life, and different things like that. So when we took this model, we took it and we decided to look at what wells look like. And we started to figure out that wells are sprinting and that our machines can figure out when they're sprinting. We can figure out when wells are walking and we can figure out when they're running. And what we figured out is EMPs like it when their wells are running. They don't like them when they're walking because they're leaving production in the ground. And they don't like them when they're sprinting because they can be costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars in workover costs when they break down because they're being pushed too hard. And so what we've developed with this model is ability using our human in the loop to look at these systems, classify them, bring that information together and uh, create what we started with was recommendations so that we could integrate a human in the loop, ask them the question if they agree with what we're doing and if they don't, we ask them why and we collect that information and now we've actually moved past the point of actual recommendations and we're actually moving to the point where we've asked users to click the autonomous button on and their, their wells automatically do this. They've, they've come to the point where they trust our machine and, and uh, it will apply these systems for them. So as you can see, I'll just quickly describe this. When we talk about an over pumping well, what's happening there is the well is pumping too fast, it's too much work. So what happens is the well is always uh, half empty and because of that, when it's half empty, the system is trying to slow it down all the time. So you can find an effective speed where suddenly that's not happening. You're, you're sp expending the exact right amount of energy in your system to, ex to get the most fluid out of that system. And then when we talk about under pumping wells, we talk about wells that we can actually get more production out of these wells. And so our model recognizes it, it classifies it, it takes action on it in some cases a recommendation or an autonomous action, it actually changes the speed of that system and uh, moves forward with it. So this, um, it, some of these systems that we're delivering um, and sort of the results that we've been seeing um, it, with our customers. So in this particular case, um, this is before Ambient sort, sort of came on board and this is where I talk about baseline and sort of an effective baseline for the oil field. And you, you start to see a very different operation of this system. It's having a number of s speed cycles that it's going through per day and its fillage is, is significantly lower. What fillage means is that's how much fluid is in a pump and your goal is to be as close to 100% as possible because if you're not, you're doing more work than you should and you're causing more problems to your system. So what our system has done over this uh, couple or th three month cycle is we've moved these systems from something that is very um, inconsistent and in some cases random and in some cases it mattered which person looked at this system to a system that is very close together, it's very repeatable, it's very reproducible. So, um, so basically what we've done is we've extrapolated this information, this is pretty realistic numbers um, these are the types of savings that this customer is going to be seeing uh, by applying this across their oil wells. So we're seeing about an $80 million increase in revenue across about a 450 wells 
um, and a $3 million reduction in workover costs, which is pretty significant. So. All right, um, so this last one, sorry about the <laughs> top there. Um, this is another example of how we're now, the, the last uh, picture was more focused on what I would call machine learning kind of capabilities, um, pattern recognition type uh, implementations. This one is very much focused on a deep learning feature uh, capability whereby um, we're automating and using humans to help us classify and ask, ask questions for and validate the decisions we're coming to. And this may not look familiar to everybody in the room, but this is a tool that uh, production engineers use to visualize uh, what's happening a few kilometers downhole in a pump. And so if you were to think of what an ideal picture would look like, it would be a rectangle. So um, there's not, these a lot of the time aren't rectangles. And because they're not rectangles, they can mean a few different things. They can mean there's gas interference causing problems. It can mean that the pump isn't full of fluid. There's a number of different things. So what our system is now built to do um, is we start to categorize them and look at these pictures automatically um, and validate uh, what's going on with the, the cards. So we can classify, um, we can um, provide metrics on and grade um, the performance of each individual well and start to detect anomalies um, across different characteristics uh, of that well. So, all right, so this is sort of our last slide. Um, this is sort of our prediction in terms of what we've seen so far. Um, but the actual uh, application of this autonomous operation in the oil field, when you're talking about um, an industry uh, that is focused on uh, cash and focused on cost savings and uh, focused on being lean, um, we're looking at providing, because of this capability of first off, um, baselining an entire oil field and baselining the operation of these wells. Um, we're starting to look to, as we get clo close to our full autonomous opt optimization, three to four uh, barrels a day, or uh, LOE reduction um, on our systems. So uh, with this particular producer, that would be equivalent to almost a billion dollars. So that's, uh, I think, everything I have for this one. So um, yeah, all I'll say is at the bottom, we are hiring. Um, there's an email address there. Um, we're, we'll be hiring uh, significantly over the next six months, and I'm hoping well past that. So um, if, you're, if you're interested, there's an email address there. Come and grab me. I'd love to talk to you.